Alright, hi everybody, and welcome to my channel. For all those first time viewers, I'm the Dividend Investor. I'm a chartered professional accountant here in Canada with a background across various industries. I started this YouTube channel because of my love for finance and more specifically, my love of researching great companies. I like to learn about companies, the qualitative and quantitative aspects, their business segments, and the overall stock market. This channel will focus on the growth of my portfolio from this balance of $45,000 to $500,000. This growth will come in the form of stock price appreciation of my holdings, the reinvestment of my dividend payments, and the deposits I make. At any point in the video, please feel free to hit pause in order to get a clear picture of all of my holdings or take a screenshot for your reference. So without further ado, here is an overview of my portfolio. Here you can see the portfolio that I made specifically for this channel. These are real dollar values, as you saw on my screen before, as I believe in being totally honest when it comes to my financial performance. Here we can see that my portfolio value is 30,000 US dollars, whereas previously we saw that it was 45,000 Canadian dollars. You can see it has a dividend yield of 2.60%, which means an annual dividend payments I receive of almost $800. All of my information is here in Qualtrum because I like using Qualtrum for a graphical representation of my portfolio. Now, if we scroll down, we can have a look at my specific holdings. They are sorted by the holding weighting of my portfolio, with the highest weighting starting at Microsoft and the lowest weighting ending at VG Properties. So let's go and do a brief dive on each one of these holdings. Here we can see my number one holding is Microsoft. As Microsoft is the largest holding in my portfolio, you can see I'm very bullish on the company. They offer a wide variety of products, such as the Office Suite, and are a growing leader in the cloud computing segment. You can see I have a market value of $3,900. I'm up about almost 9%. I have 13.7 shares at an average price of $262.40. My second largest holding is Apple. Apple is basically a part of our daily lives as we consistently use their iPhone, watches, and apps. You can see I have a market value of $2,400. I'm up about 13%, 14.59 shares, and the average price of my holdings is $145.76. In the number third position, along with the number 16th position, we have Lowe's and Home Depot. Lowe's and Home Depot operate in a duopoly over the home building supplies and renovation market. Here we can see I have a value of $2,100 for Lowe's. I'm up almost 8%, 7.5, 10.3 shares, and $196.23 is my average price. Compared to Home Depot, which is a smaller holding here, at about $900, almost break even on there, and three shares of Home Depot at an average price of $300.58. Now, my fourth holding is Canadian Pacific Railway. So, Canadian Pacific Railway recently merged with KC Rail and now has the first direct rail line from Canada to Mexico. I have about $2,000 in CP Rail, I'm up about 12.6%. 24.7 shares and an average price of $72.19. In the fifth position, I have TD Bank along with the 14th position, Royal Bank. These two make up a part of the oligopoly of the big six banks here in Canada, and they are an integral part of the Canadian economy. TD, I have it at a market value of $1,900.64. And then I'm up down about 7% here. I have about 31 shares, and my average price was $66.69. Compared to Royal Bank, which is a little bit of a smaller hoarding, at $1,220. I'm up about 3% on Royal Bank. 12.2 shares, average price of $97. My sixth position is T. Rowe Price. They're an asset manager with a pristine balance sheet and a strong history of dividend growth. I have a market value of about almost $1,900, down about 4%. I 
almost 17 shares at an average price of $160.64. Seventh position, we have JP Morgan. Here we can see JP Morgan, you know, it's run by the great Jamie Dimon and it is the largest US bank by asset size. I'm about $1,700 there. I'm up almost 24%, 12.25 shares at an average price of $113.92. My eighth largest position is American Express. American Express is known as the Cadillac of payment processing companies, which focuses on a more affluent consumer base with higher credit card fees, and they offer better rewards than most other credit card companies. Their market value of my holding here is $1,700. I'm up almost 10%. I have 10.4 shares at an average price of $149. My ninth largest position is another payment processing credit card company known as Visa. Visa is the largest payment processing company in the world and is a free cash flow generating machine. So Visa, I have about almost $1,600. I'm up about 19-ish percent, 6.72 shares at an average price of $197.08. In my 10th largest position, we have Texas Instruments. Texas Instruments focuses on producing analog chips, which are basically power source chips for various industries, and they have huge margins on the product they produce. The market value here is about $1,400. I'm up almost 9%. I have 7.98 shares at an average price of $162.70. My 11th largest position is Costco. Now, I don't need to talk about Costco that much, but in my opinion, they are the best warehouse supply store with an annual membership business model that is amazing. Here we can see I have about $1,300 in Costco. I'm up about 18.5%. I have 2.7 shares at an average price of $427.26. My 12th largest position is Manulife. Manulife is a slow-growing insurance company, and it has steady earnings and a very large growing dividend. I have about $1,300 in Manulife, almost break even at about minus 1.7%, 69 shares at an average price of $19.78. 13th position is UNP. UNP is the largest railway in the United States and is vital to how Americans move goods across the country. Now the market value here is about $1,250, basically break even here at 6.27 shares at an average price of $199.07. Royal Bank we already spoke about above and my 15th position is Bank of America. Now Bank of America is the second largest bank in the US by asset size and is a consistent dividend growing paying company. I have about $1,100, almost $1,200 in Bank of America, 4.77%. Gives me 40 shares at an average price of $28.51. Home Depot we spoke about above. And my 17th position here is Norfolk Southern Railway. This is a smaller position, but this is a recent buying opportunity in my opinion as there have been a lot of derailments which presented a good opportunity to scoop this company up while the share price declined. I have about $709 here, um, basically break even on this one, 3.3 shares at an average price of $211.40. My 18th position, I'm not sure why Qualtrum doesn't have the logo here, but it's National Bank. It's a smaller Canadian bank, but has a strong historical performance and bright international expansion opportunities. I have about $669 in here, down 3%. It's about 9.11 shares, an average price of $75.75. 19th position is Google. Uh, Google owns one of the largest search engines in the world, being Google Search, and also YouTube, and it utilizes them for generating consistent ad revenue. I have about $650 in Google, about break even there, down a little bit. 6.13 shares, an average price of $106.13. As you notice, they do not pay a dividend. My 20th and 21 holdings, these are smaller positions that I just started, but the 20th position is Realty Income, known as the monthly dividend paying company. They are the largest triple net lease in the US and generate consistent cash flow from the rent that it charges to tenants. I have about $430 in here. I'm up almost 2%. I have seven shares at an average price of $61.18. And my last position is Vici Properties. Vici Properties 
owns the land and buildings of a couple Las Vegas casinos and charges rent to those casinos. It's a new position. I saw an opportunity to scoop it up, but I just bought a little bit as I didn't have that many funds available. But I will continue to add to this position as opportunity presents itself. So I bought $233 here, up 6%, which is about 7 shares at an average price of $31.41. So as you can see, I like to invest in quality, profitable, cash generating companies with a history of predicting their growing cash flows and dividends. I buy these companies when I feel they are trading at a reasonable price compared to their intrinsic value. Now if we go back to my portfolio in my Wealth Simple, you can see that I have about $45,000 in my TFSA and I'm up about 8% over all time. Now like I said before, on this channel, I will focus on sharing my investment journey with you using this portfolio that I made specifically for this channel. I'll do some deep dives into my holdings and I'll be analyzing companies I'm thinking of buying, sharing the dividends that I collect along the way, and reflecting on my growth as an investor over time. So with that, I just really want to thank you for tuning in to the first episode of Road to 500,000, and I'm excited to start building our wealth together. I encourage you to subscribe for free and hit that thumbs up button. If you have any suggestions on any companies or content you would like me to discuss in future videos, I encourage you to leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of The Road to 500,000. Please be advised, I'm not a professional financial advisor and all of this content is for your entertainment purposes only. Thank you. Bye.